thank you for accepting the interview for uh, Christ in Africa and Joe. We are pleased to uh, have you to speak in front of the camera to our people. Um, first of all, I have to glorify God for interesting the work of spreading Orthodox faith in Burundi and Rwanda. First of all, I have to thank our Pope and Patriarch Theodoros, who is the spiritual father, who is the spiritual leader for Orthodox in the Patriarchate, Greek Patriarchate of Alexander and Oral Africa. Second, I have to thank the Patriarch of Romania. I have to thank His Eminence Metropolitan Theophany, whereby I visited and you come from his metropolis and you have been working with us. When I say working, you have been volunteering to come in Burundi, especially in the region of Bobanza province where we have our institutions, the high school, the primary school, uh, so that you have been really a very resourceful person. And later on, when I asked you that, what do you think if you would like to come and serve in Burundi as a priest? And you said yes. And the good news is that uh, when I told my patriarch that I'm going to receive another Romanian to come and do mission. Because I already have one uh, Archmandrite, Father Nectarius Dima, who is in, in, in Rwanda. He is doing a good job. And now another one is coming to help the education system and also the people in, in Burundi. So this is a great blessing for our patriarchate and especially in the metropole of Burundi and Rwanda. One thing people have to know, our patriarchate, our patriarch, Theodoros, he welcomes people from over the world, those who are unorthodox, to come and participate in his struggle for mission. Especially on our synod, you have people, bishops, who are from Uganda, from Kenya, we have from Cyprus, we have from Greece, we have even from Jordan. So our patriarch comprises uh, bishops, moreover, the world in the countries of Orthodox. So this is a great honor and blessing because for us, we don't uh, discriminate. So now here in Burundi, uh, we have now Christ in Africa, uh, which is Emmanuel Victor, whom we ordained to the diaconate. And our prayer is that he attracts many people to come and help in different ways. And also another thing, Burundi, and Rwanda, they are independent countries. Burundi and Rwanda, everyone is welcome to visit these countries with the blessing of the bishop or without the blessing of the bishop. And they can visit our churches and they can pray in our churches. Only for those priests who would like to serve when they visit either for their personal reasons, either some as tourism, some are working with the governments of these countries, 
they need to have a letter from their bishops that they are canonically ordained. Then we can allow them to serve in our parishes. We do not own Orthodox. Orthodox owns us. So everyone is welcome, and we are happy to have Deacon Emmanuel Victor, who has decided, and his family, now the wife will be called now the Akonisa, that to come and live with us. And really, the orthodoxy is worldwide. It welcomes everyone. Yes. Th thank you very much. Um, also, many people are thinking that uh, and seeing that the uh, Christian faith is thriving here in Africa. And they say, well, maybe because in uh, Europe countries, in the West, uh, the faith is climbing. Uh, can you say uh, if it will, do you think in the future it will be possible people to be like missionary in European countries from here, from Africa? Those are indications which indicate that the Orthodox is thriving in Africa, it is true. Some come various reasons. One of the reasons is they see that the orthodoxy, uh, like uh, other countries, especially those countries where there is orthodox, they had nothing to do with the colonization, like other countries. That's one of the reasons. That is a country which got never in involved either in the politics all in genocide which happened in these two countries. So one of these things, they say we are going to a church. Second, is uh, those who are coming, they are coming because uh, thinking that the Orthodox Church can help them to overcome their social problems, for example, because those people have many children, and they think that the Orthodox Church will help in educating their children, which we are doing, but we don't educate the children in order so that we can get Christians. No, 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 we educate the children, and we build schools like the one which you saw in Bramata, the school there. Is the, is the other children, everything is free. When I say free, I mean education. We don't, uh, children don't pay school fees. They are supposed to pay school fees, but in the area where we are is the area where by it is not very easy. For parents, seven children, he doesn't have to eat, and then we ask you school fees. That's one of the reasons, so some, they say, because our children are being educated. Second, there are some social issues. Some don't have something to eat, not because there is no food, they don't have land to cultivate. So some ask us, we build them maybe a house, or we rent a land so that they can cultivate. So there are those who come, when I go there in the Orthodox Church, I will be helped. So there is that, that reason, okay? Others are coming for curiosity. Okay, those are very good. They will come, but we, who are receiving them, are we ready? Are we ready to teach them orthodox? That's the question mark. So that's why Victor, the deacon, Nectarius, and our uh, novice, they come and they participate in different activities of the people. So for us, we are very grateful. And also, when they come here, they don't see that we are black or we are white. No, they are coming with the spirit of Christ, who embraced the poor, who embraced the sinners, who embraced all of us. So we have to be Christ-centered, God-centered, Holy Trinity-centered. So we come with the spirit of orthodoxy. And the word orthodoxy is something which is, uh, the word, if we look at it in the dictionary, is something which is straight. 
It has no zigzag. So the people who are coming and embracing Orthodox, but it's a challenge to us. Is like, for example, me, I'm very proud, very happy. When I see that I baptize many, many children, I baptize many people, priests are baptizing many people, but for me, I'm concerned. It's like you are giving birth to the children. Are you going to take care of those children? Or are you going to abandon them? That's the problem which myself, inside myself, I always think, yes, I have, we have baptized them, but are, going, are we going to take care of them in the spirit of orthodox? And we are lacking people who can give orthodoxy, let us say, with the exemplary life, their lifestyle matters important, not only the words which is now very, 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 very difficult. That's why you see when there is a, a problem in the Orthodox Church, because we are, unable to take, we, 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 not, we are not able to take care of those children whom we have baptized or the people, a people run away. If there are other people who will be able to give them things, they will run away. Uh, because we never prepared ourselves very well to give birth to these uh, people to enter Orthodox. So it's a challenge. The Orthodox Church has to sink in our hearts, to sink in our hearts, not on the surface. So this is a challenge. We need people who can teach, not only to say that they have knowledge of theology. It is very good to have the knowledge of theology. But we have what myself I call the people, uh, those especially us, who have studied theology, and I call them sometimes, especially those who don't live according to the theology, I call them theol uh, theology a theology in Greek. Theology a theology. They are theologians on the mouth, but they don't live the theology. We have those many who have degrees, who have masters, uh, who have uh, PhDs, but when you look at their lifestyle, it has nothing to do with the theology and what they did. But we know very well the mystical fathers, they said that when they defined who is a theologian, they say a theologian is the one who suffers more, not the one who knows more. And also the mystical fathers, they say that if you pray in the right way, you are a theologian. But it's good to have knowledge. So we need a man of prayer, lifestyle. It is not easy, really, to live the Orthodox Church, uh, Orthodox faith especially in the countries whereby we have challenges. And these challenges have to deal with the social issues because you can't talk about Christ theology, yet some people have not eaten for days. And then you, you expect that uh, uh, the word of God will sink in their hearts. And also, there are those also uh, who want to own Orthodox. It is mine. We cannot own Orthodox. Orthodox own us. And whatever we are doing, we are doing it for Orthodox. For example, I can't say, you know, me as a bishop, that the Orthodox Church in Burundi and Rwanda, that is my project, that I own it, that it is mine. I can't allow anyone. No, it is not my project. It is a project of Orthodox faith. For example, like you now, a deacon, you can't say, you know, me, I'm in Burundi, it is my project. No, it is a project of Orthodox faith. So people have to understand that 
the Orthodox Church owns us. We all, they own us. We don't own Orthodox. Uh, who brought the Orthodox in uh, Burundi and in Rwanda? Orthodox has been in Burundi and Rwanda for a long time. Especially the way we are here, where we are, we have a very big, big church, which is belonging to the Greeks, Hellenic community. And as you know, wherever the, the Greeks, even the Romanians, even the Russians, wherever they went, either in Europe, either in America, wherever they went, they are building the communities. Uh, they are building churches, which we, see, we had in America, uh, Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia, Greek, part of Greek Orthodox Church of America. First of all, the Greeks, where they went, they went with their faith. So the most important was their faith. They did not want to lose their faith. Second was their children. They want their children not to go to other churches. Third was about the education. So we see that the Greeks, where they went, they created communities so that their children do not go to other faiths. I believe also the Romanians. Outside of Romania, they did the same thing. And also they were using their own languages. So the children can understand the language of the service in the church. So here we could say the, the, the Orthodox Church came here. But it was not extended yet to the local people like in Burundi, like in Rwanda, uh, the new Orthodox uh, Church, but they knew this was a community. So later on, we started also to expand, to, to give Orthodox to those, to the local people. That's what we did, even in Burundi, even in Rwanda, I could say in Rwanda, it is me who went there and started. But Orthodox was already there. Also in these countries, Burundi and Rwanda, there are many Orthodox faithful from those countries which I have mentioned, who are here either through the embassies, through European Union, through UN. No matter when in these countries, they try to look where they can go to worship. I've seen uh, people dancing here at the liturgy. Can you say us what they are singing? Because they dance very nicely. And uh, at what moments they dance and why? If you can explain. It is very interesting that during our services, especially after the Divine Liturgy, people want to praise God. But when we say to praise God, these are hymns from Psalms, from the Bible. It is not something which they have made, all man made, all local, no. These are Psalms from the, uh, from the Bible, which people sing, and they sing in a rhythm of dancing. So that's why you see in the church, they sing those uh, hymns, like the one about the blood of Jesus, which cleansed our sins, like uh, many, many other uh, psalms in the Bible, we are by the, they, they, they make it to look, to be nice. So that's why you see that really, even when they are welcoming visitors, uh, when they are proceeding to be baptized, uh, when there is a function, after the liturgy, people are happy and really they want to dance. But dancing with the control, not the dancing like the others which are being done in maybe, uh, maybe in the clubs, there is a difference. And it's just for a short period. They like to dance because it is inborn in them. It is in them. They feel, and also I could see uh, they copied 
this from other denominations like the Protestants, the Anglicans, even I have seen now even the Roman Catholics, eh, after the service, after the mass, eh, really people want to praise God, to praise God, to praise God. But in the liturgy, they don't dance in the liturgy, no. Only when, for example, they are very happy when they come to receive communion. They feel they are coming to receive the blood of Jesus, so they want to go to receive the body and the blood of Jesus. They want to go when they are very happy because they are going to eat the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, so they can also uh, dance, going to receive Holy Communion. But people misunderstand, thinking, ah, oh, we have changed the tradition. No, Orthodox tradition can't be changed. For them, they can change, thinking that really they have changed, they, have, they will change Orthodox. Nobody can change Orthodox. Also, the apostle, he said to be happy, not to be, it's a challenge for us. Sometimes we Orthodox, we are uh, not uh, living in a, a life that uh, is bringing happiness and we tend to be sorrow or sad. So yeah, it is true, but with control. If there is no control, it can go beyond. Instead of following what the apostles said, that to be happy, to do with joy and what, people, they can overdo it and then to become uh, uncontrollable. So we need to have control. Yes. yes. Um, I've seen people that, um, here they sing in Romania sometimes. Uh, who brought this system of singing in the, the language of the people present there? It is not only Romanians. Because here, as I told you, we have people who are living, working in Burundi and Rwanda. Even when I was in Nairobi, Kenya, we had Romanians, we had Bulgarian, we had the Russians, we had, we had, we had. So we wanted, first of all, even those Romanians who are living, visiting, and also to, to say a few, few songs or a few hymns in Romanian. And the good thing, we have one young man who is talented. When we teach him something, he teaches to other people. And also in Kinyarwanda, in Kirundi, in Kiganda, in Swahiri. So that's what we do. It is not that broad because we have people from all these countries. So our best way to do it is when we say Romanian, when we see Russian, when we see a Greek, when we see this one, we say, okay, let us say something in his language. And whenever we sing something in those, the language of those people who have attended, they feel very happy. Um, Jesus Christ, he ate at the table with uh, sinners, with uh, Pharisees, and uh, he accepted everyone. I've seen here the same spirit of acceptance. Can you say a few words, our attitude to the people who do wrong to us, what is the right attitude to them? Because many people, they do wrong to us. First of all, if you are a God-centered person, if you are Christ-centered person, not man-centered, and if you read our Lord's Prayer, where it says, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So who am I? Me as a Christian who claim I'm a bishop, me who claim I'm a priest, me who claim I'm a Christian, and I don't want to forgive anyone. So this is pharsaic. And it is not orthodox. We have to forgive until we will die. We have no compromise of those people who say that they can't forgive because someone has done wrong. Then you are in the wrong church. Then you are not a Christian. You are a Christian of the mouth. 
not a Christian. Of course, people will wrong us. And above all, none is perfect. Only God is perfect. We struggle for excellency. None is perfect. And Jesus came for those people who were sinners. He did not come for saints. That's the reason why our Lord Jesus came. And you remember, even they are choosing Jesus when he was going to eat with the people who are not Christians. When they saw him going to the houses of the sinners, they said, no, this can't be a son of man, God. If he does these things, visiting these houses, and Jesus told them, who needs a doctor? A sick person or a healthy person? So he came for us sinners. And also for us, as I said earlier, we do not own Orthodox. Orthodox is not my personal property to say, if someone does a bad thing, that I chase him in the church. No, I have not that right. To chase someone in the church because he has wronged, because he has that one, it is, that is not Orthodox. Okay, to suspend someone, not to do certain duty, yes, but to say I have chased you from the Orthodox Church, never, and that is not Orthodox. So if we are Christ-centered, if we are God-centered, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, eh, it is we have to be the Orthodox until we will die. And we have, when we walk on our ways, on the road, every person whom we see in the road, on the road, we say he is, he is a candidate to paradise, to be our wish. That any person we meet on the way, we say he is a candidate to paradise. Because all of us, we were created in the image and likeness of God. We have the image. We lost the likeness. So that's what we are trying. That's our struggle to bring people to the likeness of God. We have the image. It's like, for example, you see a human being, you see people, they label them or they call them names. For example, you hear that this is an animal, this is a pig. Yet he has the image of a human being is because we call him those names, which is not proper, he has lost the humanness in him or in her. So instead of like a, acting like a human being, he acts like a, an animal. And that's why, you see, we label them such. But we lost eh, the likeness of God. And that's why, you see, eh, we, struggle, we struggle very much. We Orthodox faithful to gain the image, the likeness of God. We have the image, but to gain back our likeness, to be partakers of the divine in nature, to be partakers, to reclaim, to produce relics. Me, the bishop, the priest, all of us, we have to produce relics, to produce saints. And the saints, to produce them, you have to struggle. So that is our duty, whether we like it or not. If we claim that we are orthodox, faithful, if we claim that we are orthodox bishops, priests, if we claim that we know theology, we have to embrace the universe the way how our Lord Jesus Christ spread his, his arms on the cross. He was nailed in order to say that's how much he loves us, and that's what we should do to welcome everyone who comes. Thank you. As a priest, as a bishop, as someone who is a leader, uh, how important is him to give freedom to those that uh, he's uh, interacting? You know, in our creation, we have the will, free will. So the freedom which you are talking about, I don't know which kind of freedom. People are free because if you see our church, the door is open. 
Everyone, anyone is free, Orthodox faithful, to come and stay, and also is free to go out. So Orthodox Church is not a prison that you enter Orthodox Church or become a member of the Orthodox Church that you have entered prison. No, it's a free church. You enter, you stay. You want to go, you go. When you come back like a prodigal son, we welcome you. So we were created with a free will, free will. So there is this money, money-centered way of mind that, you know, uh, freedom, I'm not free to say anything. You are free, but we have the tradition, we have the canons. It is not me who have said them, we have to follow them. If you don't follow them, then you are free to go, but you, can imp you cannot impose anything on us, and for us, we cannot impose anything to you. So everyone is free to enter and worship and also to go out. So we have the free will which we were created. It is within us. We have what we call um, the acrisis, discernment. You can see this is right, this is darkness. So you decide to follow light or decide to follow darkness. So uh, I don't know which kind of uh, free or freedom. Yes, free, everyone is free and there is freedom. You cannot, we cannot impose anyone that you know here, here, here. No, no, Orthodox is, is not a prison. You go, you come back, but you will not impose things which have nothing to do with our tradition, Orthodox tradition. To say, I will go there, I will change. Eh? Eh, there are those people who come, of course, from different uh, denomination because they have been uh, taught uh, the beliefs and when they come in the Orthodox Church they think that uh, whatever they were doing in the churches where they were that the same things are the things they are going to do in the Orthodox Church. No, it is not like that. You enter the Orthodox Church, you will follow the Orthodox Church. There's enough for us, we base on the what? on the tradition of our church, the canons. But unfortunately, uh, we have uh, misused our teaching in order to say, you know, the canon says this, the tradition says this, all that. Where is it written in the Bible? Where is it this and that? There are many things which we do, which we we are a tradition with a small T and a capital T. So, uh, and also those traditions, they can keep them outside of the, our beliefs. We are not against those traditions or what, but within the Orthodox Church, no. There are people who think that they are going to change Orthodox. Orthodox can't be changed. They will think they have changed. Eh, it's like also this one, uh, which is talked about dancing. Because we allow that, they say, you see, now Orthodox has changed. Is, is, is what? Eh, is dancing, is doing this. No. That is where we allow it. That is where we don't allow it. So we should embrace even those traditions for people to keep their culture. For example, the traditional dancing. So the people to keep their tradition, eh, the dancing eh, outside eh, the certain cultures which are very good to keep them. Like I believe even in Romania, eh, you do have your tradition, you have your customs, even though you became, eh, you are orthodox, but you still respect them and you still keep them but have nothing to do with the Orthodox. Those traditions which are, have nothing to do with the uh, Christian way of life, for us, we embrace them. We encourage people to do them. Because here in Burundi, especially in Rwanda, we have even cultural uh, dancing, where people are doing uh, really traditional uh, dancing, 
outside the church, keeping their traditions, their cultures. We don't want them to get lost so that we can embrace the foreign ones. When I'm saying foreign, which have nothing to do with Rwanda or Burundi, that one they have to know it very well, that we keep them. And me, I'm a great supporter of keeping those customs, the tradition uh, outside of the church. People to continue so that they don't forget, forget them. Yes, culture is very important, I think. Every, every one of us needs to have guides and mentors. I was curious if you can tell us what uh, was or is your uh, spiritual father or your guide may, who supported you to, on this path to become like who you are now? For me, I'm lucky very well. <clears throat> I grew near people who are very simple in Uganda. There is one priest who was working with his own hand. He was married. Later on, the wife died and became an Archman, right? He's called Father Badia Basaja Kitalo. He was a man who went to Kenya, who was in Uganda bringing Orthodox is the one who baptized me. Then there is the first bishop, Christophorus, also a married one, the wife died, he became a bishop in Uganda. There is also another one who was educated, Theodoros Nanchama, the first metropolitan in Uganda. He was educated, he was going to Tanzania. These people were down to earth. There is also another one in Kenya, eh, Gaduna. Those are people who are fighting, especially during the colonialism. So these are the people who laid the foundation, especially in East Africa. And also people loved them because they were working with their own hands. They were not being paid. They were not being, uh, how can I tell it, uh, harassed. So they were very simple people. I'm on that foundation of those people. It is the one really who molded me and really shaped me. And later on, when I was a student uh, studying in, in Salonika, we had many people from many monks who are coming from Mount Athos, who are coming in Thessaloniki, uh, who are teaching, who are doing confessions. Among those, there were even some Romanians, there were some Russians, especially the Greeks. There were holy men from Athos who are coming to Thessaloniki. And above all, also, when I became a monk in one monastery, which is near uh, Orumiria in Harichidichi, which is near Ajoro, St. Arseni in Harichidichi in Greece, where I became a member. And uh, being near the Geronda, the elder um, Theoclitus, and uh, apart from that also, I have people who were priests in a parish. Even apart from that, even students who are good people who uh, were my mirror. Even, even I was working in, uh, during the summer, I was going to the villages to work to get some money. Also those people who gave me hospitality wherever I worked, it was really, really very good. And also later on, when God, uh, I don't know how he did, there was one Romanian, uh, who uh, visited Kenya. And then he came to church. As I was saying, people come from all over the world, 
and where there is an Orthodox church, they come to, to, to pray. Also, there is this Romanian. He was in Kenya. He came to visit. And when he came to visit, he attended the church. Then after church, he introduced himself, saying that he's a Romanian. Here, this is Andre Vradner. Eh? He is visiting Kenya. That's how we became friends. And he's really who told me, you know, we would like to invite you to Romania. Really, he talked to Bishop Theophanes. I was invited to come to Romania. If I said the relationship between me and the Romania is because of him. I can't forget that history. He's the one who linked when I visited Romania. And also in Romania, I was embraced. And it was a miracle that he, I visited that feast day of St. Parascheva. To me, it changed my life. It is the first time in my life to see that people line up in a, a cold weather just to go and kiss the relic of St. Parascheva. From that time, I met many bishops. Bishops are inviting come and do, uh, come and be with us in 50 days. So from that time until now, we have that love of the Romanian. Again, when they came to Africa, like you now have come, like Father Nectarios, like even other people, they love the Africa and they want to stay in Africa and they want to work in Africa. And above all, our patriarch, he has his arms, is welcoming everyone who is coming. Yeah. So can you say a few words about the openness of the patriarchate uh, towards the mission? Uh, because also inward and outward. Um. As I said earlier, that the synod of the Greek Patriarchate of Alexandria and all Africa, it has bishops from Africa, it has bishops from Cyprus, it has bishops from Jordan, Greece. Apart from that, we have even priests, even Russians. But recently, it has not been very good on uh, the mission work. After this war, which is now in Ukraine and Russia, and because our patriarch was firm in his way, how he does things. So as a revenge, the Russians, I call it a revenge, this is my personal. And I, I think it is, uh, what, what, what did the Russians now, what we call exarchate, that they have come to Africa uh, to do whatever they are doing now. They have, priests have joined them. Uh, this is a great sin on both sides, on the Russian and even on our side, because all of us, we are Orthodox. We are to be blamed, and they are to be blamed, but, what they are doing is blackmailing us and scapegoat. Can you say for people that don't know uh, what, uh, what actually happened? Unfortunately, that's the truth. Those who are joining them, uh, and those who have done that, it is their right, okay, to do whatever they are doing. But the question mark remains, why do you target the Patriarchate of Alexandria. There are many places in Africa where Orthodox has not reached. And above all, because there is a problem between Russia and our Patriarchate, so they have to punish us, to show us. They are blackmailing us. That's me, I call it this person is blackmailing us. If you don't do this, we are going to do that. So in other words, 
They blackmailed our patriarchate. He said, if you don't do this and this, we are going to enter you. And also our patriarchate, the same thing. He did the same thing. Eh? If you don't do this and that. So he's blackmailing. And scapegoat. He's blackmailing and scapegoat for both sides. And I want to tell you this. Please, please, don't take advantage of unable people. Don't take advantage. Because really, if we say the truth, it is what is happening around the world. Hey, look what is happening in Ukraine. Eh? It's the world. They are taking advantage. Eh? The European are saying, you know, you Russians, eh? and the Russian are saying, you eh, Ukraine, you Europeans. Eh? So eh? it's an advantage. They are taking advantage, and the poor people are suffering. Can we imagine now in Russia, the Russian and the Ukrainian, they are killing each other? When I say Russians and Ukrainian Orthodox, I mean the soldiers and the president. They are Orthodox. It isn't this, but he's taking advantage. He's scapegoat. He's blackmailing. So I pray and hope that the Russian Orthodox Church please stop blackmailing our patriarchy. Stop using scapegoat because Africa is being taken for granted. For example, even these Russians who have come have taken the priest, there's nothing which is going to change. Africa, them, they remain still in need. I don't think they are coming, all they're doing what? I don't think there's something which is going to change. Maybe those priests will change to do this, but about faith, what we teach, what they teach is the same thing. So please, 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 Russia, Patriarchate, please stop taking advantage of Africans because our patriarch, either he will take his blame. Please, please, stop black mailing. Because you know now, uh, we can say the truth. We see Africa, we, have, we hear China for Africa, Africa for China, China for Russia, Russia for China, eh? Europe for Africa. And when all of them, them come, so now it is becoming Russia for African Orthodox Church. It is the same thing. It's a game. And it's a sin. And we have to answer to God. For us, we are praying that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we are praying for them. And those who have left us, we wish them well. But they should not interfere in our way of working to interfere in our parishes. And so we wish them well. And as a prodigal son, when they will realize their mistake, we shall, we shall receive them. We are praying for them. Please, 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 don't blackmail us because our patriarch did this and that. Please, don't use scapegoat that because of this or that. Let us remain as we were in the beginning because for me, when I was in Kenya, I was embracing. I was a spiritual father for all the Russians. We didn't have this problem. And these people were being attended. We used to embrace Bulgarian, Romania, Serbians. Even when I used to go in, in Zambia, I used to go to do the liturgy for the Russian, for the old calendar. Even in Rwanda, I used to do that. Embassy used to, to embrace me. We used to do choose. So I don't see that there is any difference. Only thing is that problem which was caused by the recognition of 
Ukraine, by Ecumenical Patriarch and other countries, but this have nothing to do with Orthodox. And it is not Orthodox. Whether you are Greek, whether you are Russians, whether you are here, we are talking about Orthodox, not Greek, not Russians. We are talking about Orthodox. And again, when one day, I don't think our judgment will be that, you know, are you a Russian? Are you a Greek? Eh? Our judgment will depend whether you are a Russian, whether you are a Greek, or whether but are you a Christian? Why are you God-centered? Why are you Christ-centered? Why are you forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us? So please, please pray for our mission. Pray for the Patriarch of Russia. Pray for the Patriarch, our Greek Patriarchate. Pray for the Ecumenical Patriarch so that they can put on the eyes of Orthodox. Not their personal, how can we call it, Fimi. Eh? Me, 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 me. Eh? Please remain Orthodox faithful. Let us have eyes of orthodoxy, orthodoxy. To be a Russian is very good. To be Greek is very good. To be a Romanian is very good. But put first orthodoxy. Orthodox, I'm repeating, orthodox. And I know for us, it has created a problem. It has created divisions among the families. So you find one family, we are under eh, the exarchate of, of Russia. We are under Greek. So you find even the families have been divided. So you find families which were together, now they are divided. It is a great sin on all sides. Great sin on our side, great sin on the, on the other side, a great sin, especially for me, it is really sadness. And on the other side, as you said about freedom, free will, they are free. But is it to me, for example, you have children, and then tomorrow one of your child tells you as a father, as a parent, to say, I no longer recognize you. I have found another parent who is more rich than you. It pains when you are son, when you are daughter, when even though if me the father I'm helpless, even though me the father I'm smelling, I'm sticking to see that your child says you are stinking. I found a father who smells very well. It pains. So that's what happened to those priests who are being ordained by our Patriarchate of Alexandria through their bishops. So that's what exactly what they have betrayed the Orthodox Church. Because it is not, it is not the problem between Russia and Patriarchate of Alexandria. This is scapegoat. It is scapegoat. And it is blackmailing. But we pray that one day this problem will be solved. Again, we will go back the way how we used to be. And I want to wish each and every one of you a blessed Holy Week. The way how our Jesus was nailed on the cross so that all this which you are going through on both sides, the Russians, the Greek patriarchate, so that all this can be nailed on the cross of Jesus and to have love, 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 so that when we reach uh, in head, in, in, on the resurrection, the way how we see Christ is risen from the dead, trampling one death by death, and upon those in the Hades have bestowed them life. We see Jesus, the first people, eh? when he 
he resurrected, he went into Hades to resurrect even those who crucified them. It is something which is. First he went in Hades. He resurrected them. So let us rejoice in this Pascha. When we say Christ is risen, we saw also we are being risen from our weaknesses. So, wishing we good at Pascha, Holy Week, and please keep playing for our patriarchs. They even the communal patriarch, even the one who is the source of this. What is it that, you know, you can't... Eh? But for us, we are suffering because of our poverty. Thank you, Your Eminence. Uh, so my last question, uh, because some people, very few one people, I think uh, he's tried to discredit us, like uh, what we are doing uh, here, without knowing what we are doing. Uh, can you say a few words about like our mission as uh, our angel? Beloved, Christians? beloved Christians, beloved missionaries, you know, we like very much exposure that when I do this, I want it to be known. It is very good, but that's not the orthodox way. But people have to know what you are doing. And we see that Jesus said, when your right hand gives, the left hand should not be known. What you are doing, Victor, Deacon, what you are doing, Father Nectarius Demas, what you are doing, those people who are helping Christ in Africa, please continue doing it. Whether you are being recognized, whether you are not being recognized, but it's very good really to be recognized. It is very good people to recognize you. But normally, the devil will use that. You will say, ah, I did this, I did this. Eh, this proudness. Then the devil eh, will use that. So that instead of people focusing on the work of God, they will focus on what Deacon Nectar, Deacon eh, Emmanuel, eh, Victor has done. What the people are helping him, what they have done. What Father Nectarius has done. Yes, they are very good. They are very good to be recognized. But just focus on the work, on the mission, and the spirit of orthodoxy. They are very good to do that one. And before I forget again, for example, in Rwanda, we built the first cathedral, which this cathedral, there are many people who could be there. Then we reached somewhere on the roofing and finished. Then a very pious Orthodox Christian from Romania, George Bakari, came and helped us to finish the cathedral. Otherwise, we could not have finished it. And even other people through Father Nectarius who are helping, but all of them they gave with the spirit of nobody knew, even those who are helping you or who are helping anyone to come here on what? Just recently we had one priest, eh, Father Daniel, who came here with a daughter. They saw our needs, but please, those who are helping, whether you want to be recognized, but if you want us, we are recognizing you. We don't forget you. We are praying for you every day. But we are recognizing you. But if you need to be recognized, we will do that. But we will prefer whatever you do to do it in secrecy. But when we say in secrecy, we don't see, say that, yeah, you know, you should not be known or prayed for. No, 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 no. Yes, you are left, should not expose to the right. But they have to be recognized, and I'm recognizing them. Thank you, thank you very much for 
helping in any way you can. And especially now with the, the great task which now our new deacon is taking, especially in issues of education and helping the people in different ways. Uh, I think you have seen what he has done. Uh, again, another thing also, you expose what you are doing, what kind of exposure you have to do. Eh? May God bless you and have a, a blessed Pascha. And please pray for us. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our sins as we, for, uh, as we forgive those who sin against us. And also, I'm asking forgiveness in my way of doing things, in my way of life, because also me, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm a human being. You pray for me and pray for our patriarch, Theodorus. Please pray for the ecumenical patriarch. Please pray for the Russian patriarch who have created a problem for us in Africa. Why they chose Africa? There are many countries where they are not orthodox. Please pray for them, especially our patriarch, Theodorus, the communal patriarch, the Russian patriarch. They have created a problem for Africa. They are one responsible, directly and indirectly. Of course, we are praying also for the patriarch of Romania because, and the bishops who are giving blessings so that people can visit Africa and even other places. And all the priests and all the people who are helping us in their own way, known or unknown. Especially pray for this scapegoat and blackmailing of people are using. Yes, we are Orthodox, whether you are Russians, whether you are Greeks, whether you are Romanians, whether you are Arabs, you are so Orthodoxy is a treasure. That's the treasure which is in Africa. Only thing remain Orthodox faithful. For example, you see gold. Eh? If you throw it in the mud, eh, the mud gets it, eh, but when you do it, it remains gold. Also, let us remain gold. Whether they create all this, we remain gold. Let us remain gold. In other words, let us live in pollution, but we are not being polluted. Let us remain in this problem, Russia, the Ecumenico, uh, Patriarch of Alexandria. Let us remain in the orthodoxy, orthodoxy, orthodoxy. Be followers of orthodox. Don't be followers of the Ecumenical Patriarch. Do not be followers of the Russian Patriarch. Or be followers of the Patriarch of Alexandria or anyone else be followers of orthodoxy faith. Don't be followers of Biakatonda, the Bishop of Burundi. No. Be followers of the faith. That's what I'm requesting for this Pascha. To change. To change. To change. But unfortunately, people want to change to start from other people. They don't want to change to start to themselves. If I want to change, it should start on me, not to start from other people. Some say, you know, I have helped this, I have done this and that and that. Very good. It is not how much it is not how much you give. It is how you give. It is not how much you give, but how you give. 
it is not how long you have served, but how you have served. Like me as a bishop, I can say, oh, you know, I have served in Burundi, Rwanda, 10 years. It's not the 10 years, but how I have served. So it's not how much you give, but how you give. It is not how long you have served, but how you have served. In whatever we are doing, let us bear that in mind. Be blessed. Thank you, Reverend.